Hi, my name is Katia Chasereta. I am majoring in electrical engineering and will be transferring to UCLA in the fall. I am also the 2015-16 Mesa Student of the Year. And my name is Rick Tenorio. I am transferring to UCSD in the fall. Uh, my major is human biology and I'm the male student of the year for the 2015-2016 school year. So my first Mesa experience was a little funny, I think. Um, I was convinced to come in through a professor that I was taking a summer class with, Professor Camarena, and he told me that he was actually really good friends with Rafael and that I needed to join the program. So after class one day, he made me come over and talk to Rafael. And I remember coming in here and he asked me what classes I was going to be taking in the next semester, and I told him um, that I was going to be taking Calc 2 and Physics 195. And he freaked out and took me into one of the study rooms and he sat me down and he asked me if I was coming prepared to class. And I said, of course I am. You know, I thought I was a pretty good student. I've been doing pretty well up to that point. And in high school too, I was a pretty good student. And then he asked me, what section are you in in your textbook right now? And I was so embarrassed because I could not tell him. I didn't even know what the name of the chapter was. And so that's when he told me, he showed me his hand and he showed me the gaps that I had. <laughs> and he said that Mesa could patch up those gaps for me. And so that was my first experience. And looking back now, I realize how wrong I was and how unprepared I actually was coming in, even though I thought I was a pretty great student already. Uh, my first experience in Mesa was way different from yours. Um, I think I came in one spring, and this was before I was a human bio major. I came I to see Raphael. Explain the same thing: how everyone has uh, gaps in their foundation, like how you have your hands and your fingers. And um, uh, I remember being so bummed out that I couldn't come into the Mesa program. Uh, that I actually changed my major. Um, to human biology. So fast forward the next spring, uh, I had the major change, went through, you know, just a whole series of events. And I'm sitting in the Mesa room and I remember meeting Nate and a few other Mesa creators. And when they were doing their BPR and that they were just ahead um, of the lectures, so that really inspired me to, to really get on the ball with things um, and really absorb everything that's in this culture. Uh, I think Mesa has helped me in so many more ways than I can even imagine right now. But the thing that I remember the most is when I was first starting out with the program, it was actually my first semester in the program. And I, it was the reason why I decided to start coming in and talking to Rafael and really investing myself in this culture. I was taking, like I said, Physics 195 with Calculus 2. And all of the math classes before that, I had taken them with um, a classmate that I had. And both of us had a 4.0. And he was actually consistently doing significantly better than me on the tests. So where I would get a 95, he would get 100. Where I would get a 92, he'd get 97. And that was pretty much every exam until we got to Calculus 1 and I noticed he started to struggle a little bit um, but he pulled the A through and just decided you know to keep on moving on and that's when I kinda got the little warning flag that I maybe needed to start looking for help so fast forward to the next semester we're taking our physics class together we get our first exam back um, I got I believe a 63% and I think he might have gotten a 65. Um, so both of us just kind of looked at each other and we've never really got anything below a 90 on an exam, let alone a D. So I just remember thinking, what is going on? I've done everything I usually do. I had studied like I usually do. I felt prepared coming into the exam. The questions didn't even feel particularly challenging. Um, so that's when I came in and really just 
started talking to Rafael. I remember one of those times he came in with me and Rafael talked to the both of us. And afterward, we walked out and then he asked me, well, so what do you think about this program? And I said, you know, I really, I'm going to apply. I really want to do this. And he said, no, I don't think I am. I remember he, him just saying, no, I can do this on my own. I don't need anybody. I've been doing everything on my own up until this point and it's been working out. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I should be able to do this. Well, come next test, I started implementing the learning culture and everything that I've learned through MESA. And I got a 100% on that second exam, which was actually, I believe, the hardest exam of the semester. It was definitely not any easier. And he got a 33%. Now, I really don't believe it's because I studied different. I don't think it was because I did anything different um, in terms of what I was already doing. I really do think it's because I was preparing myself. I was doing BPR. I was really just immersing myself in this learning culture that I had just learned, and he simply wasn't. So he failed the class. He failed our calculus class too because he was just so stressed out about our physics class he was failing. And I ran into him the semester after that. I got A's on all those classes and I ran into him at the trolley station and I asked him what he was up to and he told me that he had dropped out. So this 4.0 student hits a wall, decides not to get help, and just drops out. Whereas I was not even doing that much better than him test-wise, I decided to get the help I needed. And I am now, I graduated, I will be transferring to UCLA. I have a research internship over the summer at Rutgers University. And I just, I really give all the credit to MESA and the learning culture and what the tools that were given to me during that time I was struggling. How has MESA helped me? Oh wow, uh, I would say number one, self-advocacy. It has taught me how to fight for myself, how to fight for, uh, for my dreams, how to fight for my future, um, and that I love. I'm never, ever, ever going to forget that. And I think another major important lesson that I've learned from Mesa is how to network and really uh, cooperate with professors. Um, there is, I think my first internship uh, came during the summer. Uh, I was taking a physiology class and um, I was incorporating BPR and it was just the ball was rolling and it was just so so good. Um, and I was getting A's on on all of my exams and we had some students from UCSD who were taking that same course and I was killing them. <laughs> they were they were struggling to keep up. It was it was good for me at least. And uh, <laughs> My professor, uh, Dr. Matz, he, he recognized that and he's like, oh yeah, he's this guy Rick, he's actually, he's in Mesa, I know it's a great program and he's helping other people out. He referred me um, as an SI instructor here on campus and he's one who also helped me get uh, my first internship at Palomar Medical Center um, in the Pathmaker internship at a local hospital. So to any incoming MESA students, I want to say a couple things. First of all, I know you're looking at me here and probably have already heard all the things that I've done through Raphael or through this video alone. And I want to first say that I am no different than you. When I came in, I was just like you. I came in with gaps. I came in thinking that I knew everything. Clearly I didn't. I came in a little bit stubborn. And I think the most important thing is to really understand that you like Raphael says, have the potential. We don't question potential here. If you are sitting in this room or in, in the Mesa Center or anywhere around here, then you have the potential. And if you are willing to take this and run with it and not question yourself, not doubt yourself, and truly just invest yourself into the program, you are going to go so far. It's unbelievable the support that Miss offers. And I think the most important thing is to really, really, really take it to heart and take it seriously. Yes. If you take everything seriously, all the tools that are offered to you, 
there's no reason why you won't succeed. But this has to be personal. It has to come from you. Nobody's going to be chasing you around telling you that you have to do this, that you have to study, that you have to be PR. You have to do this on your own. You have to sit yourself down and really want to do these things. And honestly, there will be a difference from the first BPR to the next lecture. Just, it's unbelievable. There will be a difference. Just, and you will see that. You will see that. And I'm very passionate about this because I went through the whole process. And honestly, had I gone to a different school, a different college, I don't know where I would be. Because Mesa has made the difference for me. Mesa has changed my life. And I believe that to the depth of my core, Mesa has changed my life and my path. So take it seriously. Uh, I think a lot of what you're saying, Katya, is definitely hitting home. Uh, for future Mesa creators out there, I, I would invite you just to, to be maintain a, a mindset of a creator. Uh, there's going to be a lot of times, a lot of stuff that happens in life that uh, is going to be, it's going to seem tough, it's going to seem difficult. Um, but you have to ask yourself, am I acting like a creator? Am I making choices the way a Mesa creator um, would make them? And it's really taking this personal, taking this whole journey as uh, something personal. But with that, I want to encourage you that it's, it's worth it. It is so worth it. This is where you need to be. If you are a STEM major, you need to be here. Um, the personal development that you'll just see in yourself, it's, it's really beyond words. Um, we have a saying at Mesa, Mesa we don't just uh, make creators, but we make leaders, student leaders. And that's definitely, I, can, I know for myself and for Katya as well, uh, leaders in our community um, and definitely leaders in, in the next level where we're going. Uh, so absorb everything that this program has to offer. Don't just learn the surface culture, but the deep culture. Uh, and really, really take it to heart. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to Mesa! Mesa! <laughs> <laughs> you want to go first? I'll go first. Go ahead. That's probably in the video. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I was thinking that's all. <laughs> <laughs> they inspired you. Yeah, they inspired me. <laughs> let's do, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it really loud. Okay. <laughs> Cut. Really? Yeah, cut. That's it.